Okay, folks, hello. Welcome to this second round of Taylor Dry Sherry with, with John and Nilly from George. We have some problems. They've been going on for 30 minutes trying to set up a hangout, but it wasn't working out. I could hear it. I actually was able to watch it on your channel. So it was broadcasting, but my audio sounded very bad. And I think that might have been because I was using uh, Opera. I don't know if it sounded bad to you, but to me, it sounded garbled. Hmm. So you could delete that video. But, uh, well, you do what you can, you know. So, hey, folks, we do what we can. Last night, I did a hangout, an examination with John James P. Madonna. But it wasn't really an examination of Dr Taylor Dry Sherry because he was not able to get it. So he did a, a, a black mm, blueberry wine. So, but he tried his best. He called the company. They sent him to a call service. The guy said he was a brand ambassador, yet he knew nothing about the wine, but he was in the Philippines. He, oh, right there, that's, that's a bad sign. He sent him to a bunch of stores, none of which carried Taylor Dry Sherry. So he got very frustrated. So now I'm with a second frustrated person. John and Nilly, who's trying, trying, trying to set up the hangout, would not properly work. So you could take some deep breaths. I know how you feel. I've gone through it. Once I figure it out, it'll be good moving forward. It's just getting past that, you know, that initial setup phase. Um, I don't know. I would drive right to your house, but it's eight hours and it's a long way to go <laughs> to do this. Here we go, Taylor Dry Sherry. I don't uh, know how. All right. I, I actually have to go grab mine really quick. Okay. I don't know how long it's been on the market. I think they started making sherry in 1960, people. Honestly, I think they were making wine, New York Concord great wine, since we know since 1880. And they make a whole line of table wines Lake County Red, Lake. County Reddit, all that stuff, which I would be open to review at some point. Uh, but um, I think in 1960, if I'm not mistaken, they started getting into the dessert wines, which became, in a way, their biggest thing. There's a store here that sells Lake County Red. It's very much overpriced. It's $10.99 a bottle. I don't see too many people buying it. I know I wouldn't pay that much if I can go to Dornex and get it for $6.99 for the same size bottle. It tastes very good. I think their table wines that sell are the Paul Masson, which some stores sell, some don't. 30 years ago, 40, well, let's say 40 years ago, let's split it in half. 30, let's split it down the middle. 35 years ago, Paul Masson was a huge brand of, the, of table wine. Now it's kind of died out in the sense that there's no television commercials, but you can still get it. Uh, so now Taylor makes a living, you know what I mean? Like there's a steady income off these dessert wines. Is it a big, big thing? I doubt that. You'd see commercials on TV if it was, but I'm sure they're doing fine. Constellation Brands selling it. I, I, I requested a book at the library about the history of Taylor wine and how the family botched things and caused their own family company to get bought out. I thought it would be an interesting thing to read, but it's really not my problem. You know what I mean? It's one of those things where, oh, well, you know, <laughs> ask the Bush family. They did the same thing, botching their operations and getting bought out in 2008. The Schlitz family, well, really, the Schlitz family didn't run Schlitz. It was run by a different family on the daughter's side. Unfortunately, they did all kinds of things wrong. And then the man that ran the company got sick with leukemia and died. And then the family just decided in 1982, let's just throw in the towel and just get out. And they sold that, sold the company. Not an unusual series of events, honestly. So here's Taylor Wine Company, part of Constellation Brands. Who is the Sands family started by Marvin Sands in 1954. I don't know much about him. He did die. His son, Richard Sands is the guy running this show today. 
They even named a wine after Richard called Richard's Wild Irish Rose. And that's a product made with great, it's like, you know how you can go to the grocery store and in the frozen section, they have that concentrate, mm -hmm. grape juice concentrate, and you add water and you can tolerate drinking it. Well, they take that stuff and make wine out of it. So you can imagine what that's going to taste like. Uh, but it's bizarre in a way because that stuff <laughs> is the backbone for an in 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 powerful beer, wine, and liquor company. <laughs> so it's amazing how these things work. And I wondered, what is Richard? He's real. He exists. He's still alive. Hello, John and Millie from Georgia. Hello, Ron. Thank you for having me on this examination. <laughs> John's got to drink something to calm down. Yeah, my blood pressure might be slightly elevated right now. Oh, boy, I remember a year ago when Dr. Dave was trying to set up examinations and he couldn't get it to work and he was getting so mad. We finally got it to work, but he told me a couple of days ago, he said, well, I don't really drink too much anymore. He's getting up in age and um, with a lot of cardiac, cardio, cardi, we call it cardiovascular issues. So his drinking level is very, very um, low relative to a few years ago. But he is still around, and he said he, he has an interesting job, so um, it's very uh, good for him. Anyway, people, what can we say? Taylor Dry Sherry, you were hesitant to buy dry. Maxwell says, hello, Ron. Hello, Maxwell. Greetings to you in Russia. You were, re you were reluctant to buy a dry wine, right? Um. Normally, I would be, but with the Taylor line, I've been very pleased with all of the products that I've tried so far. Um, so I was actually looking forward to this one, and I just cracked the bottle open and gave it a pour. Yeah. And it smells a lot like the cream sherry, um, although watching your examination last night, it sounds like it's going to be a lot less sweet, but it does have a lot of the same nutty qualities on the aroma it's it actually smells pretty sweet as well i think but, you um, a little shocked by the taste now look at the appearance hold that up it's a lot yeah a lot different it's a, a lighter brown color the camera's probably not really doing it justice it's almost like a it almost looks like a bourbon <laughs> yeah right no joke it's tan. That's what you call light brown tan. Yeah. <laughs> Whoa, and that's coming from grapes, people. It might be fortified with brandy, and if it is fortified with brandy, it's probably Palmasan VS. That's just a guess. I have no way to back that up. <laughs> I don't know if you ever reviewed Palmasan VS brandy on your channel. Maybe, yeah. Once I get this, uh, you know, live. You never, you never reviewed it independently on your channel no we we did the vsop on your channel uh i've never had the vs i've had the vsop though that's that's actually the only palmasan brandy that i've had yeah the vs is very inexpensive and um it's like their base model you know how uh you buy a ford focus they'll have the base model and then they'll have the you know they have like the se the standard edition and then they'll have the XLT, the extra luxury touring, whatever, you know what I mean. So right. uh, Paul Masson starts with the VS, which means, well, it's a fancy, very, very smooth, but it's a fancy way of saying very standard. <laughs> and then VSOP is very smooth, old pale, which is like, oh, well, like Mercury used to be. Like you had Ford, then you had Mercury, and then the XO, XO, what I would be like the uh, Lincoln. 
Right. Actually, I'd really like to try the XO. Um, the VSOP was really good. That had a lot of bourbon qualities to it. It was actually aged in uh, bourbon barrels, wasn't it? Yes, all their all their brandy is aged in bourbon barrels at Bardstown 1792 Distillery. Yep. I know that because they told me that on the tour. <laughs> the lady says, uh, you see all these barrels in this barrel house? And remember it collapsed. Remember one of the houses collapsed in the spring? From what I understand, it was a bunch of Hartley brandy. So I guess uh, Bart's, Barton was saying, Woo, at least it wasn't uh, our, one of our premier products, but it's probably all insured anyway. But uh, um, although I did notice that the price of Hartley had j got jacked up about $2 a bottle recently, so it might have had something to do with their whole stock getting destroyed, you know, um, and, not, and they're not going to have any. But uh, well, we'll get on with this examination. But yeah, it's kind of like Ford, Mercury, Lincoln. Of course, the Ford Motor Company destroyed Mercury by crosslining. In other words, what they the problem there was they started making the Ford so fancy that people were saying, "Well, why buy the Mercury?" Right. The Ford is the Ford has just as many options, and it costs three hundred dollars less. Well, hell, I'll, excuse me, Lincoln. I'll just say three hundred dollars. So then. Mercury just deteriorated. The same thing happened over there in GM. They made the Chevrolet so fancy. People said, well, why should I buy a Pontiac or an Oldsmobile? I mean, I could get the same thing for less with the Chevrolet. So you got to watch it when you mess with your your um, conception of it. Right. Yeah, I don't even, I don't know how GMC uh, still sells vehicles. You know, you've got the GMC Sierra, which is their truck. Um, and then you've got the Chevy Silverado, which you can get with all the bells and whistles, but the GMC version of it costs ten thousand dollars more. So, yeah, when I was looking at trucks years ago, the guy at GMC said, "Well, you ought to, you have to understand, we make our trucks with a much stricter tolerance, quality tolerance." I said, "Oh yeah, they put a fancier grill on it. That's what they do, and and bigger rims." Yeah, my daddy said, "You believe that?" I said, "No." But uh, so, but anyway, let's get off of that, I guess. But, but it's the same concept because, but I think Paul Masson has kept to their their uh, their structure. The Paul Masson VS is basic. It's not bad. It's just basic. You can tell it's basic. And then you get the VSOP. It's quite clearly better. There's no argument about that. It's obviously better. And then when you get to the XO. I mean, forget it. It's going to taste way better. It's got more complexity. It better be if it's twice, three times the price. And the same thing with E and J. They do the same thing. The VS, that'll, that'll be kind of like smooth as a nail gun, you know. And then it's really nice. And then the EXO is just dynamite. Oh, well. Taylor doesn't have those levels. <laughs> they just have varieties. And they are all budget uh, price. Yeah, budget price products. So, And John, I say that, but I could have to eat my words because I was talking about the Paul Masson, right? Mm -hmm. I find photos on the internet of these super high grade Paul Masson brandies that are in these heart shaped bottles that aren't on the website. You can get it out here in the east, eastern states, eastern of Mississippi. But I see people in California posting photos. And it, apparently it's only in California where the Paul Masson distillery started. And these things exist. Why would they have photos of it? You hear right. what I'm saying? And I can't believe it. You know what I'm saying? Where can I find this? So it's almost like they have a hidden California produced reserve product. And that could be the case for these Taylor wines. Like you might walk in a store one day and your jaw drops because they might have a $80 bottle of Taylor dessert. Like we saw with that Cuddy Sark $250 bottle. Right. A which, $250 bottle of Cuddy Sark. My goodness. 
But look at the website, you'll never, you'll never see it. Right. All right. Same thing with, uh, yeah, like Evan Williams. I, I've seen a red label on the internet, which is like a hundred dollar bottle, something like that. I mean, but you'll never, you'll never see it probably. And it's not going to be listed on the website. So forget the it's website. It's almost like they don't want people to know about it. It's a secret. If you're lucky enough to find it, then good for you. Otherwise, tough luck. Same thing happened with Christian Brothers Brandy. I called the company. I said, why you uh, don't list these, and I listed the ones, on your website? Are they discontinued? And the lady said, hold on a minute. She said, no, they're not discontinued. They're all here. And she was obviously looking at our database. No, it's not discontinued. I said, well, it's not showing on the website. Well, it's still made. And well, of course, I know it's made. I bought it. So it's like you're saying that these companies produce all the stuff you can read about. And then they produce all this other stuff, which you can't read about, but you might right. stumble, you might stumble upon it. Right. Yeah, that, that sacred bond. Uh, I would have never even heard about it if, you know, you hadn't um, brought it up. I mean, it's not none of the stores carry it. You have to request it and then they have to special order it for you and it's arguably their best product but nobody carries it it, it makes no sense i know and there are budweiser beers that exist that you cannot buy budvar i would yeah you can buy that i've seen that no oh. but like it's just strange like there's paps general beer in china general hmm. beer very expensive. And then they have this PAP Special Reserve they sell in China. It's like $40 a bottle. But anyway, I mean, it's just, it's a different, it's like there's a parallel universe in beer, wine, and liquor. And some of the viewers might know about that. It's kind of like McDonald's and Wendy's have a secret menu. Right. <laughs> You're crazy. Oh, yeah? <laughs> I'm not crazy. They do have a secret menu. All right. Well, you give an examination of this now. If you don't All mind. right. So we talked about the aroma. Doesn't smell too much different uh, than the cream sherry or even the tawny port, really. So, uh, cheers. Cheers to you. <clears throat> oh, wow. Told you. <laughs> A lot different uh, on the taste. It's, it's more nutty. It still is sweet, but it's very, I mean, like the name implies, it's very dry. It doesn't have that sugary component that sticks to the inside of your mouth and lingers. This is like a, it's you know, dry. like a, a light beer. It drops off. It's dry like Bud Light, I'm telling you, people. Right. And you could get so drunk on this, I would be very careful with this product. Remember, yeah, it might seem light, but it's 18% alcohol. It will hit you like a hammer. Believe me, people. Yeah, it definitely doesn't. None of the Taylor products taste like they're 18%. Um, they're all very smooth and easy going. And first thoughts on this are, I mean, I'm, I'm really impressed. Um, I thought it was going to be a lot less sweet, but that's not really the case. It's still sweet, but it just drops off really quickly um and it i think it's a little bit more it has more nutty qualities to it and that could just be that because it's so, so dry that those qualities coming through a little bit more and it's got something else i can't quite put my finger on that's a little bit different yeah i know i same thing here it's almost like a champagne but i didn't want to say I didn't want to say champagne, but it's so. We used to go out to eat at these buffets for Easter and uh, Christmas, like at the Marriott Hotel, and they would have champagne. I don't know what kind of was, probably inexpensive, you know. But it has, and no, this is in no way bubbly, but it's got that dry. I don't know how to describe it. Some of the viewers might know, but it there there is no way even though we're having trouble describing it. You would, you would agree there is no way you could confuse this with the cream sherry or the golden. No, maybe on the aroma, but the taste profile is completely different. 
and then that that really that dry finish that you get just really sets it apart. Um, honestly, <laughs> I'm kind of surprised that I'm about to say this, but I think I prefer this to the cream sherry oh, because boy. the cream sherry the the sweetness sticks with you, and, and you kind of have to. Um, I, I don't know. You, not that you would want to drink a lot of this, but you could. This is, I guess, a little bit more sessionable. If that, you know, I mean, as sessionable as an eighteen percent product can be, but it's it's a little bit smoother because it it doesn't linger and it doesn't have that. Not that the cream cherry is cloyingly sweet, but this is a lot more balanced. I guess is the word that I'm trying to. Yeah, because a little, you you love the cream cherry now. I do, yeah. The cream sherry was my favorite. Um, I don't this know. Might, Let me. This might, this might surpass the cream sherry. I think what we're tasting is a pepper note, like a white pepper. Yeah, there is a little bit of a yeah pepper. Um, God, like you said with the champagne, it's almost like they use a slightly different variety of grape or something to like a little bit like with champagne it's super dry because of the the grapes that they use it's got it does have that champagne thing going on with it it's a weird company because they put out what i think everybody would call hobo juice bum wine like richard's wild irish rose i mean it's really not that cheap because i saw it today and i said well that's not that good of a price. But I guess when people are living a certain lifestyle, <laughs> they scrounge up some money and buy. I don't know. But I see Richard's Wild Irish Rose everywhere, you know. And then I can go to the West Bank of the Mississippi River in, Orle in Jefferson and Orleans Parish. And it gets even more grim. They got the Richard's Moscato in those big bottles and they're flask bottles they're like thin you know it's made so you could put it in your big jacket while you're wandering the streets right but they, it's funny because they sell it with a straight face like you know oh yes the richards wild irish rose moscato and then they go into all this intricate detail about it we use lambrusco and vinifera wine and then blah, blah, blah. i'm like this company is something else. Like they don't even try to be sarcastic about it. Like some companies, they know it's junky and they'll try to be like, oh, hey man, you know, like it's all good with, when you're down with your gang, you know, and you're, but they don't do it like that. They're just saying like, here's a, here's this uh, Richard's Wild Irish Rose. And I'm like. And they're laughing all the way to the bank because it sells like crazy, which yeah, I mean, it's unbelievable how many people buy that those products. And I'll tell you one thing. We're talking about how the alcohol here is masked. People, <laughs> you buy that Richard's Moscato. See, I don't buy all the other ones because they're all flavored, like banana, like electric banana and all that stuff. But the two that are not flavored is the wild grape. I don't know why they say wild grape. And then the Moscato. The Moscato is 17%. See, what we're drinking here is 18%. And the alcohol does not shine through. And I got mine for $4.99 a bottle. You hear me? Wow. But the, yes, true story. But the Moscato from Richard's Wild Irish Rose, same company, Constellation Brands. That stuff tastes like 17% all the way to the bank. It makes you want to claw the skin off your face. You drink that and you just say, oh, yeah, unbelievable. Worth examining in a perverse sort of way, but oh, mama. Right. This doesn't come across like that, though. This comes No, across this is worth examining in, in a good way because it's very enjoyable. And um, honestly, why would you buy something like Richard's Wild Irish Rose, when you could buy something like this for $2 more, the alcohol is masked really well and it actually tastes good. So, 
You might have a hard time putting this in your vest pocket, though. Maybe they can uh, come out with a little flask size for the, you know, for all the functioning alcoholics out there. I shouldn't say that though, because it is within the realm of possibility, although highly doubtful. I guess it is within the realm of possibility that some people are buying Richard's Wild Irish Rose flask bottles for. Now, I was about to say as a work companion to bring the work, <laughs> sip, but that's not really legitimate. Is uh, so okay? Never mind that. <laughs> There's got to be. Uh, all right, all right. Yeah, the enjoyability factor for something like that can't be too high. I don't care who you are. It's not. It's just an inferior product. Um, the the tailor, at least you know, it, it's understandable that people can would buy this and actually be able to enjoy it. Right. It's not just a booze bomb. Right. Holy smoke. Well, I guess you're going to probably do an independent solo review on your channel, I would assume. But how would you? Um, yeah, I'll, I'll probably, I might post one later today just um, since I couldn't get my uh, my hangout um, thing going. But if I... If I don't watch it today, it's not because I don't like your channel anymore. It's because there's a lot of football coming on. Oh, yeah. Nothing I'm, again. Uh, that big game early on in the season, LSU-Auburn. That's uh, that's what I'm going to be watching. Um, yeah. I'm wearing LSU, but I, I don't have any confidence. Well, I have a little confidence. I don't have too much. I watched them play Southeastern Louisiana University last Saturday night. I was at the game, and they look raggedy. But I tried to tell people, I said, you have to understand, they're not going to show all their cards playing a team like that. Right. These big time teams like LSU and Auburn, like let's say if Auburn was playing, a, I'm trying to think of a team that, oh, uh, like South Alabama. Well, that might be dangerous. So let's think of a team. Oh, uh, Texas State, they're pretty weak. Or Lamar University. You know Auburn is not going to show all their hands playing Lamar University, all their cards. They're going to run a vanilla offense, and they're going to – you say, well, they only won 34-3. to three. I know, only 34-3. to three. When they play LSU, that's when they're going to start showing you what real offense they have. Yeah, LSU and Auburn both save all their best stuff for Alabama because that's, that's who they really need to worry about. Right, LSU, LSU and Auburn today. LSU is going to have some plays they're not going to show today. Right. Although they really can't afford to lose it. <laughs> All right. Uh, but, yeah, the Alabama game is – that's the the game. for. So I would rate this very high. Um, I'm not going to start rating till January 2019, but I would highly recommend it. In my case, if you can get it for $4.99 a bottle, what the heck? I mean – I mean, I got it for – seven dollars and some change and i would still highly recommend it at that price point just because it's it's just really good i mean for the for the money it's hard to beat um i could see this selling for ten dollars a bottle and people i think would still buy it because it's just a quality product and if you were cooking with it it would be just dynamite right I could think of almost any kind of food you could cook with this that would just come out pre well, Any Italian, I mean, I could, yeah, like make a, a good marinara or something like that and put a little bit of this in there. Oh, man, you'd be, you'd be set. Oh, because I had some of that Taylor Marsala. Oh, retraction. I had Krabari Marsala. And I was broiling eggs and, and ham in the oven and i was bathing it in that krabari marsala and let me tell you it was so good <laughs> hmm. it would just get embedded in the eggs and the in the meat you know oh yeah you did uh you made a couple of videos i think uh cooking with the marsala yes that's right that's one we need to look at if y'all ever want to do it the uh, taylor marsala and then james James Madonna found the Krabari, which got bought out by Constellation Brands also. That's a real man. His last name was Krabari. 
But if you ever want to do the Taylor Marsala or the Krobari Marsala, just let me know. I I actually would. I almost I almost bought a bottle of the Marsala. Was sitting right next to the dry sherry when I bought it, and I was I was this close. Um, because I think I think the Marsala and then the Golden Sherry are the only two from their main line that I haven't had yet. Okay, the Golden is nice. The Marsala is almost like an herbal wine. You know what I mean? It's like it's sort of flavored with some kind of strange herbs, but it's. It's good, you know, if you can if you can stand that. Right. Which I can. I can stand it. Um think about it. there's a lot of beers these days. Isn't that like the big deal in beer today? Something was in my nose making my nose itchy. Isn't there the thing in beer today where everything's herbalized and flavorized? Yeah. Fruit beers, beers with you know, spices in them. Um, yeah, I mean, honestly, <laughs> more people drink flavored beers now than they do standard, you know, standard lagers. Uh, they drink the flavored, you know, uh, Gozes are, are big. Uh, I was watching that Green Zebra uh, review oh. that, you, that you and David did, and uh, that, that was something, that watermelon Jolly Rancher type thing going on. He was losing. Uh, he was losing it. I was like in his face when I said an A minus. That's he just like. So well, he he contacted me this morning. In fact, well, um, somebody told me this morning. Uh, I don't like that guy on your videos. He's a grouch, and he always thinks you're stupid. He 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 addresses you like you're dumb. I said I don't know what you're talking about. I don't believe that. I don't know where he gets that impression. He might think the beer is dumb that he's drinking and, and talk about the beer, but he's, I mean, like the Green Zebra, he was talking about, I, I think he actually did. I don't know. It was off camera, but he was going to pour it down the drain. <laughs> oh, he just I don't went, know if you let him, though. I don't remember what he did with it, but he just went berserk, you know. He, he says so much off camera that's way worse than what he says on camera. It's kind of funny, you know. I say, man, if people could hear him off camera, they would change their opinion, you know, because he just gets in a rage, you know, and he was like going on a on like this out of control rant the other day about, I'm getting ripped off. I'm tired of getting ripped off. And he was going on and on about craft beer and he just went crazy. I said, well, I wish I had the camera running. <laughs> But I mean, he's honest. That's that's why I mean, that's why I like watching the videos with the both of you, because, you know, you're a little bit more cool headed and calm and like think, you know, he's kind of he just goes with whatever is on his mind right then and there. And he has no filter, but at least, you know, he's being genuine. He's being honest with what he's saying. So it's a it's a legitimate review. Right. He doesn't even have a YouTube account. You hear what I'm saying? It's not that he doesn't have a channel. He doesn't even have an account. Because I said, why don't you comment on the videos? He said, I don't even have an account. <laughs> I mean, it's like he's not worried about messing up his channel. He doesn't have one. He doesn't even have an account. Right. Anyway. All right. Well, that was fascinating. So uh, I'm sorry you got frustrated, but I can understand because it's very irritating. And then uh, I think in about... Let's see. Well, it'd be a while, but I have that Livingston Cellars. Want to find out what it is? The um, Livingston uh, fridge. Did they make up? A... What now? I put it in the fridge this morning because it said serve chilled. Let me go see. Hold on. Is it a pour? No, no, no. Oh no! I'm never. Mind. I'm thinking of Fairbanks, not Livingston. Fairbanks. Oh, it's uh, it's it's uh, um, Livingston Cellars Blush Chablis. Oh, okay. It's a pink. It's like pink red. It's more red than pink. Is it a sweet wine? A real sweet wine? Well, I guess you call it semi-sweet. It's from Usually California. The pink wines are are sweeter, like uh, 
the Zinfandels, a lot of the Zinfandels are pink. Those are really sweet. Well, um, I got a three-liter bottle, and I got a really cheap on discount. When Winn-Dixie was doing all this discounting, because they, I guess they had a lot of back stock they wanted to get rid of. They don't have it anymore. But they had, like, for months, all this discount. They were just getting rid of it. They didn't care. They were selling it for 50 cents on the dollar, you know. So I got a $14 bottle for 7 bucks. No joke. Wow. And I just said, I'll buy it. You know, and uh, so this is an alert to the viewing public. Like Brass Tax was asking me, I'd like to join the videos. I said, Well, you can join, but you can't join unless you join. But if you want to review the Livingston Sellers Blush Chablis, Blush Chablis, that is coming up next. That's the next wine on the lineup in the lineup. As far as yeah. Liquor, I'd be interested in doing that. Oh, you should be able to find it rather easily. Plus, there's a locator tool on their website. Not You got to call somebody and hope they give you, just you type in your zip code and it'll show the stores. Also, for liquor coming up, we have Rich and Rare, October 3rd, about three weeks from now, two and a half weeks from now, right? Right. <clears throat> rich, and rare, rich and rare Canadian whiskey. In November, rich and rare reserve. So I think it's a lot of exciting stuff coming up myself. Yeah, I'm excited to try the rich and rare reserve. Um, the rich and rare is pretty good, so the reserve must be really good. Same thing with the Black Velvet. I, I'm looking forward to trying their eight-year reserve because I think the Black Velvet, their standard variant, that's one of the smoothest Canadian, you know, budget Canadian whiskeys on the market. Yeah, and you saw all the problems I had doing that T.W. Samuels. Right. That thing busted my chops. I mean, I, I can't get over that. I bought it with a real negative attitude towards it. And that's the problem with judging stuff before you try it. So I just said, this is going to be a farce. And that's sort of a lesson in a way, hating on stuff before you taste it. And I think the blind taste test can wash away a lot of that because you don't know. You think you know, but you don't know. Right. You could talk big. You could talk big and think you are an expert and you know everything. Oh, you just know everything. But when you do a blind taste test, you might find out you don't know much of anything. Mm -hmm. And that's why I was saying to the people coming at me, where's your blind taste test? I type it in. I don't see it. Well, you don't worry about me. <laughs> oh, I didn't. I never said I was worried about you. I just was responding to your incessant comments. So if you comment on my channel 20 times a day, that might indicate you're worried about me, right? Right. Hey, if you're going to talk the talk, you got to be able to walk the walk. Right. It's not hard to do a taste challenge. It's very easy. Uh, even if you work for the uh, Federation of Planets <laughs> and you're not allowed to show your face because you work for the International Fed, the Universal Federation of Planets. There should be some way to pull it off, at least. Hey, put a put a ski mask on, like all these forty ounce malt liquor, uh, you know, chuggers do. Right. They all work for the Secret Service, and they're able to pull it off. That's right. Uh, all right. Well, thanks, folks, for watching this examination. We enjoyed the Taylor Dry Sherry. Yes. Chances are you may enjoy it as well.